Miguel, I think you also brought up a great point, uh, this novelty versus experience. Um, and I think we both can speak to that uh, on, on having that experience uh, and, and how well or how much uh, knowledge that gets, that gets accumulated in our, in our collective minds in the Magento community um, and amongst um, the, the people that have been in this for the last 10, 10 plus years on working on Magento. Um, there's always gonna be uh, that, new, uh, that new vendor that's offering something uh, that seems great, but you, cannot, you can never get past having someone that's been doing this for such a long time so I know this was, this was your particular, this is one of your passions is this novelty versus experience. So uh, why don't you give us, a, give us your overview of this and then we can move on to Q and A. Yep, so <laughs> there's a, there are like maybe five or 10 companies trying to offer Super Pro Magento one. And I'm gonna be like, sure, that's great. I really like, com like competitors, but at the end of the day, how many of them have been maintaining or supporting Magento One for the last decade? When we started doing Safe Harbor, I was telling my, like, my co-workers, this is business as usual for us. It's not like we are starting to maintain outdated Magento One versions like this month. I, I can go right now and point you like 10, 12, maybe 20 sites running Magento 1.6. That's terrible. And nobody wants to see that. But it's, it's, I would say you really want experience when it comes to maintaining legacy software instead of novelty. Novelty sells, novelty is sexy, but experience, that kind of stuff is what gets you, like, that, that's the kind of stuff that might be able to help you when you're having issues. So it's not like you have to trust me for my promises. You can just go and see what I've been doing for the last five, 10 years and be like, oh, right, these guys, they actually understand what Magento One means because the first Magento One was deployed on Nexus because for the last 10 years, they have been maintaining Magento One stores, even without daily versions, even with PHP 5.6, you know? And if you go to like any other companies, you're gonna be seeing people telling you, you're gonna, you're gonna hear people telling you, yeah, PHP 5.6 is terrible, nobody should be using that. And I'm gonna be like, that's right, I agree. But then I still have people running Magento 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, and they need PHP 5.6. So what are you gonna do? Are you gonna ditch them, or are you gonna backport security issues from higher versions to like the lower versions? That's what I mean when I talk about novelty versus experience. Novelty is gonna be like, yeah, I'm using PHP 7.4, and experience is gonna be like, I'm backporting security issues from 7.4 to 5.6. You know? Yeah, it's great. I know that we're running uh, low on time now, so uh, why don't we move into the Q&A? Um, and uh, just for future topics, I think a great topic would be around uh, how, you how you launch your Magento 2 store, something like that. But anyway, so let's move into Q&A now. And uh, Madeline, did, are there some questions for us? Yep, uh, we have some questions in the Q&A box. <clears throat> Uh, this first question, how do you see mage pack for M2 for optimizing speed? I'll take that one. So mage pack is amazing. It's an incredible tool. Everybody should be using these days. It's great and it works. So I would say people should be using that to, to do a bunch of like front end optimizations. I'm not the most front end guy out there, but I'm getting into like, the JavaScript world, the PWA world. And I keep seeing more and more tools like MeshPack, which are incredible. And they really help with the performance. And it can be as basic as moving like the JavaScript and the, like the block in JavaScript to the bottom, or like trying to compile something instead of rendering it entirely in the client. But it, it, it really works. So I think we all agree. Yeah, there are lots of tools like MagePack, and, and we'll leave the link. We'll have some follow-up notes for this um, on, the, on the recording, and uh, we'll put the link to MagePack, because I also agree it's a fantastic tool, um, and it even works on uh, Magento Cloud, so <laughs> um, it can help your performance there. Great. Um, so uh, next, another question. 
Um, what are the pros and cons of maintaining your store on M1, I assume, rather than upgrading? Well, I think uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do the first part and Miguel, you can do the second part to this. Um, I, the pros certainly are that doing nothing is easier than doing something. So I'm, I guess that's a con, right? Um, uh, you, you may, again, going back to technical debt, you may have a lot of things that you have done in your Magento One store and you're not ready to do your next version, but I would just encourage you to make a plan to move to Magento 2 as you are keeping your Magento 1 store. <laughs> Sorry, you lost me there for a second. My internet went down. I'm back. Uh, we were just uh, talking. Mad Madeline, could you just repeat the question really quick? Yeah, the question was the pros and cons of maintaining your store rather than upgrading. Yeah, at some point, it's gonna, that's going to earn you some technical debt, just like Brent said. So it's there are there are many cases that maintaining your store is a better alternative than actually upgrading but you really need to understand the risks that's that's actually involving so it's it's not for everybody i would recommend that for a handful of cases but it's that's gonna be up to like the type of store and the resources you have i don't want anybody to stop selling online during these days so i'm gonna help you as much as i can but you are not gonna be you're not going to be hearing me say something like, yeah, you can say Magento on forever. That's, I don't think that's a great response. So it's, at some point you need to understand you want to move someplace else because of a ton of reasons and not just because that's the latest shiny thing. Yeah, that's kind of like saying floppy disks forever. <laughs> yeah, like they work and you can store them, but it's a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, uh, we maybe have time for one or two more questions. Um, what are some resources merchants can use if they need more information? Merch Talks. That's a great resource. Not a lot of people know. We have Magento, uh, github.com slash Magento slash Merch Talks or something. Uh, well, that's GitHub. I think it's merchdocs.magento.com or something like that. And that's a really interesting user manual for Magento merchants using Magento to sell online. We didn't have that for Magento One, and that's a great resource. If you need something more technical, I would say go to DevDocs, but it's, that, that's for developers, you know? But yeah, merchants are, merch docs are a great tool for merchants, and not a lot of people really know that. Yeah, I, I think, Mer well, Merch Docs is newer, and it is open source, so if you, if you have something that you want to add to Merch Docs, you can add to it, or if you see a mistake, it's kind of like, it's kind of like Wikipedia, you can add or you can update those. It's not, you can't do it in real time, but you can certainly put in, hey, I've seen this thing here. I would like this added. It is a, um, it is a complete uh, glossary of, of how to use Magento. And if it's not there, you can add it. Um, so it is a, it's a great resource. And I agree with Miguel that Merch Docs is a, is a great resource uh, for doing that. Um, and I guess, you know, from there, there are less technical questions on Stack Exchange. There's magento.stackexchange.com that as a merchant, you can ask questions and uh, you do get uh, fairly quick answers. And then I think the Magento forums are, are very well used and lots of merchants are using the Magento forums as well. Yep. Madeline, I think we have one more question, time for one more. Okay, let's do one more question. Um, why should I have an agency help me with my migration? That's a question for you, Brent. <laughs> well, I think that uh, that it, it is a, a process and I think going back to the, the, all the knowledge that we've collected as an agency, and, uh, and helping you to at least create that plan uh, along with our hosting provider is, is the number one reason why you should be using an agency. I think you can do the migration on your own, but uh, just like a mechanic knows how to change uh, something quickly, or at least has the knowledge and has the experience of having done that, 
going to an agency helps you to create a roadmap and a plan to get you to from point A to point B. And there may be some, some times that you can do something to get your site live sooner by using an agency who has done this before than having to go through the process on your own without any pre pre knowledge of what is what what is ahead of you and what should you expect is going to help you uh, get that path and get you live quicker and more efficient and at the end of the day you are going to save money yeah people ask me a lot about like why should i be using nexus instead of building my own thing on iws and i'm like sure go for it i'm gonna be here waiting for you when you fail that happens a lot like People is like, yeah, I can do this by myself. And I'm going to be like, sure, you can build this, but can you maintain this? And people is like, all right, it's not just building a server, but you actually, you actually have to maintain it. And that's where I provide value. That's where I help. You don't need to hire an entire sysops operation team. And that's, that's the same thing with an agency. You can do your own thing, or you can ask someone who actually understands what's going on. And that's where you have to pay for it, you know, because that's the service. But people don't get to realize that. I've, I've seen people asking me, but if Magento 2 is open source, as in free, why do I have to pay for it? Because time costs money, because knowledge costs money, you know? And it's, we are providing knowledge. We are providing the knowledge we gained for the last decade, for the last, I don't know, 20 years. And it's, that's what people don't get to understand, don't seem to understand. Knowledge costs money and time costs money, you know? Yeah, and I think, uh, I mean, I, as everybody, as all the viewers can hear that Miguel tells it as it is, um, so we're not going <laughs> to, <laughs> Miguel is going to tell you as it is, and I think that, um, yeah, I think that, that uh, he is going to help you know what you, know, what you, know, what you need, and finding an agency, finding an agency. Going to tell you as it is, is going to give you that best experience and get you live uh, quicker than not doing or, or trying to do it on your own.